All right. Anybody out there? Can you guys hear me? Everybody let me know if you can hear me okay. My voice may be a little weak at times tonight due to my situation. But we'll get through it. Once we get a uh, confirmation that I'm coming through, okay, we'll get started here tonight. I got a lot of things I want to cover. And thank you, Viper, for the host. And everyone else for stopping by. All right, thanks, Lamillo. Time to get started. Uh, I'm going to, while I'm usually, I always like to start everybody off by thanking everybody that donated. And I tend to often read off all the names, but while I'm scrolling through all the plaques in the museum here, I'm going to be talking about some other stuff. So we'll get started. There are tons. You can hardly hear me. And how's everybody else? Am I? Do I need to make some adjustments? If I got my volume up, as V I P E R two seven eight connected. As it goes, as far as I can tell. V I P E R two seven eight enter channel. Hey Dave. Hey Viper, how you doing? Good. Cool. I'm just checking to make sure everybody can hear me okay. And we're going to get them all caught up on what has been going on. All right, so as I'm catching you guys up on my ordeal and everything that I want to get done here, we're going to just browse through and thank all the donors by scrolling through, and you guys will see your names if you're in here. I think they're all caught up. So anyhow, uh, when I last left... I had a tooth problem come up, and I went to the dentist, and they told me I had to get my tooth removed. And I don't want to bore you guys with the whole story, but what ended up happening was that my dentist gave me some antibiotics, and my mouth just kept swelling and swelling and swelling to where it started cutting off. The swelling went underneath my throat, where it was cutting off my ability to breathe a little bit. And when I called him and told him, earlier that day that I didn't think the antibiotics were working. He said, uh, give it the weekend, and if it's not better by Monday, you know, we'll do something about it. Well, I ended up checking myself into the emergency room. <laughs> and after that, uh, yeah, it was a whole big ordeal. They ended up having to shipped me off to another hospital two and a half hours away to have an emergency uh, surgery done. And if you guys are, m many of you guys are familiar with me and my spinal disease I have, my spine's fused from my neck all the way down to my pelvis. So they had to make special arrangements to do this surgery because they could not move my neck, yet had to have... Uh, instruments in my mouth to make sure I could still breathe as well as be able to take out my tooth at the same time. So they actually asked for my permission to sign off on any photographs and videos because it was going to be a special procedure. And they took it out and I'm still trying to recover. I've got holes in the side of my head and a bandage still wrapped around my head. But anyway, that's enough of that. <laughs> and Kyle22780 Thank you for the follow. So that is the story of where I have been. I was supposed to go to my daughter's graduation last weekend, but ended up being in the hospital on Friday. They released me. I had to go back on Monday to get the basically drains taken out of the side of my face <laughs> and missed her graduation, but it was it's all good. And we're back, and hopefully we'll be here for a while. So, that being said, I have lots of stuff to cover. Before I left, I did have most of the animal update done, and that's what we're going to focus on mainly tonight, other than uh, some other small odds and ends. But we do have a lot to show you with the animals 
and we'll get to that very soon. Silver Lever contributors, twenty-five to ninety-nine dollars. And the biggest news of all is I have a schedule tentative release date. You never know what's going to happen, but tentatively we're shooting for June 18th, which will be a Saturday, to release the map. And we're going to start it off with a 12-hour multi-stream. Viper's going to join in, and I think Big Daddy will be here as well. Uh, it's going to run from noon to midnight kickoff party we have I can pretty much guarantee between Viper I saw his total he has saved up and what I have in Big Daddy's contributions that we'll be giving away approximately 1200 uh, probably about a hundred dollars an hour worth of prizes av not saying that we're going to give them all away the bigger ones will be near the end of the broadcast obviously but I think we're up to about twelve hundred dollars in giveaways for that big broadcast so you guys aren't going to want to miss that. Also, starting tonight, if you hit exclamation point points, you can check your points. You can play the mini game. I forget how to do that, but it's in there. These guys will remember. And the CAD's back. Welcome back, the CAD. Nice to see you again. So the mini games, uh, I doubled the amount. You can wager up to 20000 Yes, exclamation point farm. You can now do up to 20000 In addition to that, from this point forward, every broadcast I do, you are earning a ton of points every minute. Actually, every five minutes, you earn 500 points because on the big giveaway day, the giveaways are going to cost 5,000 points for an entry. You will need to be a follower but this way, you guys are accruing 500 points every five minutes that we're, you're in here watching the broadcasts, any of my broadcasts between now and then. And I also set it so that if you aren't a follower yet and you want to make sure you have points accrued for when that big day comes and get in as many entries, the entries will be 5,000 apiece. I don't know if I said that yet. You will, uh, as soon as you follow now, all new followers instantly get 10,000 points to save up. So, and Viper by hosting got an extra thousand. Anybody that hosts me also gets a little bonus. There's lots of bonuses. We're giving out points like crazy up until the giveaway day because we want everybody to win. I'm not exactly sure what Viper is going to be giving away, but I have already pre purchased several Steam gift cards um, in various denominations. I've got a couple Amazon.com gift cards. And if you guys see on the bottom of my little stream page, there's a gift.com gift card link, which is going to be several gift cards given out through there as well, because it'll let you guys choose which gift cards you actually want to purchase. And ZXOL, Zoltar, Zoltar, thank you for the follow. So with all that, you can watch both streams, or may, it'll be a multi-stream. You'll be, uh, we'll have a multi-stream link set up that night, so you can watch uh, all the streams in one little nice window. And we'll we'll alternate the giveaways too. So I'm sure we'll take turns or whatever. PC Rob, thanks for the fall, but it's going to be awesome. In addition to that, while we're going on the schedule on. <laughs> Happy Ghost 350, thanks for the follow. And here come all the follows. Tuesday, June 14th. I, Viper, you don't even know this. I, I hope you can make it. You can multi-stream, combine stream. I'm going to call the two. I know you stream Tuesdays anyway, but I'm going to do a tutorial Tuesday. We'll probably have to start relatively early, like 6 p.m. And Because last time it worked out really well we did a live online tutorial of the whole map before it was released and then later on I'll go through and annotate what topics are discovered where so people can easily go back and check it out so tutorial Tuesday on the 14th I'm looking at doing something there and you also broadcast on Thursday too don't you <laughs> yep. Thursday, it'll probably be a shorter broadcast, but we're not doing one Friday that week. 
I want to do one Thursday that will give everybody the mods in advance so that you guys can start downloading and have the mods. That way when we do release the map on Saturday, not everybody's trying to get every single file. So we'll do a little show on Thursday, and Viper, you can join in me if you want, and we'll just go through the different mods that are going to be in the different packages, and uh, we can stream it together or whatever you want to do. Or you, yeah. Or I'll let you do the show if you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. But I want to go through. Yeah, you, you have a better voice than I do. <laughs> I want to go through the uh, mods that we'll be giving out with the packages, the necessary mods, and we'll get them all to everybody ahead of time so that they can have them ready for that Saturday. And all, there's going to be a lot of people wanting to download the map all at once, you know. Th that'll solve a lot of the problem. They'll give them a couple days to even get familiar with them on other maps. Down here on this floor is the Thernadad floor, which uh, we... He hasn't been around. He donated mo all of his money in the Fences version 2. Anybody that donated money from the last map and this map forward gets in the museum for any map that comes up after this. And Andy GT Extreme just got a $100 donation. Thank you very much, Andy. You'll be on the $100 floor next week. So those that have donated serious amounts of cash, even the little amounts, they all add up. And I, you guys don't even know. Ah, it was a heck of a week with that. <laughs> how much your donations have helped me get through the issues that I ran across this week. It's been amazing. So when you, I'm living on Medicaid and medical insurance. I wa went to the dentist. You know how much my dentist visit was? And I, they didn't even do the extraction. Ended up being $403 of money that I just wouldn't have had if I didn't have the donations that you guys have given me. So that's a big thank you for that. For donations, um, I don't know if you noticed, but Pete Pukes3 donated in several different names. Yes. And he wants to make sure he gets all combined. I can't, I've, that Pukes and that's Pete Jeffs again with another $141. The total that is on that screen for the FSUK, the Bad Touch FSUK, he donated it all. I've been trying to figure out. I literally spent like three hours trying to combine. But every time I do it through that uh, Twitch alerts, it separates them all already. You know, when it goes to the, the screen printout, what goes up on this screen. But definitely P. Jevs comes through again with another $141, which literally is absolutely amazing. I will still try to get them combined because... Uh, Pukes, as it's pronounced, has donated, well, it was 860, 900, so it's like a thousand. He's, and that this total will go up on the sign here as well. Unbelievable. You guys have been incredible, but that is just, I don't even know what to say. And I can't talk too much tonight, or I'm going to lose my voice. <laughs> But in your in your Twitch alerts on your don on uh, your donation goal or donation thing, you can add. I can add to it. You can edit right and I, change it. I'll have to probably add a donation and then remove one of the other ones to get it combined. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. We'll give that a try. The thirty-three bull. Thank you for the follow. We'll give that a try. The latest one last week as well. The bad touch FSUK. So yes. Pukes is the all-time top donator, and it doesn't say that down there. And I wish I could put everybody on the screen, uh, but there's not enough room. The Bad Touch donation last week brought him up to $600, and we made this little bulletin board with the, all the exhibits that will be on this floor will be donated, will be in honor of the Bad Touch FSUK. And... I even put a little bit of info on the field status program he created on a banner here. I hope he sees that. I hope he likes what I did. I tried to take some time to get some recognition. Field status is awesome. It works with our map. We make sure it works with our maps. It works with just about every map, I believe. Some of them you need to do a little bit of tweak here or there, but incredible program for showing 
all the information about what's growing on what field, how, the percentages of that that have been fertilized and seeded, and there it is, cut grass, dry grass. It tells you everything, how many bales are on your field and which fields they're in. So it's just a really awesome tool, and it works really well with this river's map, which I have it right here. I'll scan the fields. Zoltar, thank you for the $10 donation. So we wanted to thank the Bad Touch in a big way. There will be more exhibits coming to the museum, but right now we're focusing on finishing this map up for you guys. So, with that being said, it's going to be a long show if I sit in the museum all night. I'm going to get out of here. And get to the animal business. Now, if you guys have been following the Trello board, you'll see I made some major changes. I removed some things. Some things I really want to put in the map, but as you might... It, this is the first time we really gave people an insight into what's going on behind the scenes. And there are always a thousand ideas and 500 of them can't make it. The map right now as it stands with what we've got in it is so jam-packed with stuff that I almost felt it necessary to cut a couple of the big ideas out just because I don't want it to start overwhelming people. So some I did want to add a couple, and the animals do have some cool, interesting new twists that I'm going to show you guys. Uh, but I wanted to... Uh, we're not going to do a big boating update it's going to be the same as it was in PV version 2 the uh fishing with a i think two more docks that's about it and we cut out finding the animals for the fairgrounds and that just because if i keep going this map will never be finished we're going to get you guys a copy and if you know me well enough, there will be uh, version 1.1 or 1.2 once we get some user feedback on adjustments that need to be made. But we've got a definite set of goals that need to be finished up now to get this map to you guys, and that's why I got a release date. And it's just a matter of nailing down a few of the minor things, and there's a couple major things like finishing up the fairgrounds and the the farmer's market that have to be done over a little bit, which we'll be previewing in the next couple of weeks before the release. But there were some things that have been put on the back burner for maybe the next project. And boy, I just came up with a great project idea. There will be other projects. <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to divulge any of that information. We're going to see what we got to do after this is released. Very often, if you've been following my maps, there will be this version 1.0 will be released. And sometimes you get a 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Those are just ones, they're not going to affect any save game you started, but they're things that we felt need tweaking. Maybe uh, a factory's not outputting as much as we had hoped, or something's just out of place, a, a trigger or something that we missed for some reason. So those tweaks will have to come in a future update, but it's not going to affect your gameplay when you do that update to the one point whatevers. If there's a time that a 2.0 of Pleasant Valley Rivers gets released, it's because there are major features that will require a restart. But you never know if we'll even get that far with FS17 coming around the corner and so many more ideas I want to get going on. So, without further ado, here we are at the new, very primitive looking right now. We'll dress it up either in a 1.1 or <laughs> maybe even a little bit more. But this is the stockyard, and this is where you'll be buying your animals. And they're very limited down here. So, I can buy four, and they're called empty dairy cows in this barn because they don't have any milk in them. That's the way we're going to buy them here give you a kind of a clue and over here we have uh, some more there's four more so there's eight dairy cows down here and you have 
some young beef. Right now there's only two in there at 40%. It's random. It gets restocked randomly. There's only one over here because I just empty those. So we have young beef, which grows up in, they're the male cows that grow up, that go to the butcher. And the dairy cows, which grow up and get your milk. And if you breed the two, you can get either or. We'll get into the breeding system a little bit later. And we have very similar, we have male piglets over here. They go off to the little place. We're going to bring pick up some of these. Then we have the female hogs here. Those end up being truffle hunting hogs. And then we have a bunch of chickens, little chicks, you can pick up and buy at the stockyard. Right now, I'm going to grab some more dairy cows because we're kind of a little bit short on dairy cows. Dan, enter channel. You're muted. Time. When you oh. when you left the dairy place, you went mute. I hit a wrong button. All right, so I got muted. So let me go back up. So as I was, <laughs> I don't know when I got muted, but we're back. Thanks, Dan, for letting me know. Anyhow. Dan moved to farming channel. This time around, we decided to build the barns into the map for several reasons. One of them being so we could take advantage of the menu system here, as well as several other little features that the barns have can have when, when they're built into the map. So, and we didn't go with the geese or the other animals because there's so much to do right now there is the possibility of adding the geese because it will run off the Schweinzuck script any of those types of animal barns but right now we're gonna keep it simple we're gonna just keep it to your pigs your truffle hogs which are the females your chickens and your beef and your dairy cows so there are several different animal types very familiar with but there are a lot of different twists with them so we're gonna head over there and drop off these dairy cows and we'll show you what's going on and the new barns that are brought in yeah the dairy cows stepped on the audio line and uh, sometimes I hit the hot key when I'm switching by accident and it mutes my stream automatically so here's your animal area with the uh, animal barns built in. And I believe the dairy cows go right over in this barn over here. These are empty dairy cows. So let's see if I am right. 
I will label the barns a little bit better when I get the uh, labels up, which are coming this next update next week. They go down at this end. There we go. So you put in empty dairy cows. They don't have any milk. You have to care for them when they grow up into big da dairy cows. When they're filled. When they're, their milk is ready and full. We have two of them in here. I can show you what we can do. First thing is we back up to the door. And I'm going to load up the dairy cows by hitting R to start filling. There we go. We have our two dairy cows. Now at this point we have a couple options. Number one is we can come over and you have placeable breeding facilities. A dairy cow that is ready can be brought over to the placeable breeding facility. It takes one beef cow and one dairy cow and it can and actually this barn is already filled it can have whole they have babies which will offload into the barns in a little bit uh, this one holds six beef and six dairy young dairy cows young beef and young dairy cows are ready to be put into the bigger barns so we don't have to purchase them anymore and because you're limited down at the stockyard on what you can buy you're going to need to build some breeding facilities once the young ones are put in there, they end up being empty dairy cows. And over here, once you have a full dairy cow, like we have in the thing right now, you pull in, you get the dump trigger, and we're going to dump them off. And they are in going into the milking machine. We're going to leave those two. They're the only two we have. And as they are milked, we can uh, go into the factory screen. If we go to the factories here and choose the cow milking factory and start produce, you could see we're starting to milk the cows and we're getting some milk out of our dairy cows until our dairy cows are gone. And during this process, sometimes you will lose a dairy cow. That's how we eliminate, you know, they're dried up old dairy cows. They finish up, no more dairy cow. You gotta, that's how, why you got to keep breeding them. Otherwise, you'd have an uh, infinite supply of dairy cows. So during the milking process, some of them are taken away over time. But you can see we were getting quite a bit of milk out of those two dairy cows. There's still one to be processed and... Hopefully we have one left when we're done. It's about, I think, 10% of them that are taken out. It's a little bit, uh, there we go. The milk's still going up, so we might get a empty dairy cow yet. We shall see. But that is how the cow, there he goes. So we got one left that is ready to be picked up. I wish I had more to show you. This works really well, but we just put this on the server and have been testing and tweaking it. The animal system. Once you breed the animals, you can pull them back and you can see now this is now a dairy cow. Yeah, it's not actually as confusing as it seems. If I pull back in here, I can reload if I'm on the trigger my dairy cow back up and put it back into the barn to get it ready to be milked again. So it's pretty simple. Dairy cows, that's all they do. They get milked. You put the empty dairy cow back in and it will turn back into a dairy cow that can be milked again. So you do get a percentage of them back to bring back to the milking barn. And you can take a full breed cow and drop it in the front box on the breeding facility. The breeding facility is here in the store. Under the mod placeables, we have for you a 
cow breeding facilities and a pig breeding facility. Very simple operation. They don't need anything other than a male and female and they'll create the babies and you can leave them there as long as you want. So I'm loading up the young beef by just parking over the box that's near the door where they're in there. We'll get the beef cows that we bred at the breeding facility. We'll bring those beef into the beef barn here and find the trigger. It's usually near a door. I'm going to mark the triggers better and enlarge them. It's kind of weird how they did them. There we go. So we dropped the beef off. You can see if we go to the animal list and go to our beef, we have seven beef that are ready to be taken out and brought to the CM Meat Company. And that's as simple as just loading them up over here. And let me uh, back up into the door. I'm going to show you what else we can do with them. Because as you know, you need to take a fully grown beef cow to the breeding facilities as well. So let's load up our beef cows here. Dry. Good word. Dry dairy cows. Thanks, X-Man. See, I'm not a farmer. <laughs> I just pretend to be one. But I can change it to dry. That's very simple. Good, uh, good idea. Dry dairy cow. I like it. Makes more sense. That's why we bring you guys into this, to make more sense out of my stuff. So down here along the side, I have several barns set up for breeding facilities because we ran out of room up top that still need some beef cow, beef cattle. And let's see, the first one's pig, second one pig. The last, the last two need to have males put in there, and they also need females. I'll get those when we get some more. But this way I don't have to keep purchasing them. I can breed them. So there's the male in that one. There's the male on that one. If I wanted to take out the male as is and stop or bring it to the butcher or whatever, it will stop the breeding process, but I just go over to this side and I loaded it right back up and you can see it's gone. So that's what the three boxes are. One takes out the babies, the other one is a fill trigger, and the other one takes out the adults. So we'll go back over here and we'll put that male back in there. And we'll move on over to the uh, meat packing place and drop these four. And I know it's kind of a light load, but that's all we have right now. But we'll get them, get them going. Hey man, two hundred thousand thanks for the follow. Yeah, if any of you guys have any questions, just throw them up there. If you're having difficulty understanding what I'm doing, we'll cover it better. I'm trying to get through things. A little fast tonight because I don't know how long I'm going to hold out. Number one. And number two is there's tons to cover. So we did introduce you in an earlier video to the meat facility. CNM Meat Company. And it's pretty much we'll just turn these little beef cattle into all sorts of good products. Outside box over here is for drop-offs. Inside box for pickup. There we go. I'll bring up that in the menu. Under your factories, we have the CM Meat Company. You can see I have four beef. I can now click on Start Produce, and it will turn that into ground beef, steak, pepperoni, and sausage. And you can see it's already started, and those numbers will go up pretty good. as those beef cattle are used up and you can see the four products are already being made. While I'm over here we'll go grab a few extra pigs and bring them over too and we'll go through the pig process. 
How encompassing will the PDF documentation be? That is great, because at the time of release, I highly doubt there will even be a PDF document. However, there is going to be a very extensive help system built into it with question marks of what goes where and how things are. And the PDF document, we will have a the, the tutorial Tuesday video to point you to where your questions will be answered. Uh, if S7 wants to create the PDF, that would be awesome. I just won't have time to nail it all down by the release date. There's just too much. Typically, it takes me about two weeks to write a PDF file but with all the stuff that's in this map. So it's much easier to cover in a video. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did did S seven volunteer to do a PDF file or is somebody volunteering him? No, he volunteered as long as he gave him the map. All right. Well, we'll get him going on it. Absolutely. As long as he does it on his own time privately, uh, we'll get him to it next week because everything should be ready to go. As long as he doesn't share it. <laughs> everything, it won't be complete, but it'll be enough to start. And it will be enough to where, I, I'm on the wrong side of the river to where any future updates will uh, not affect the save game. So that'll be good. I went on the wrong side of the river. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be... So we'll have to see. There's a lot to do, but there will be the question marks and the arrows telling you where to do things. That's coming in next week. You'll see a whole mess of them in the show because that's one of the primary focuses to get done this week is the built-in help system so when you're on the map you want to know where something gets dumped at a factory there will be a thing that points to it you want to know how something's done there's obviously not everything can be covered that way but we'll get quite a bit let's see what do we want here we wanted to get some female piglets over here. So here we go. They're loading them up. We've got them. Redneck's got a question. He says, how big of a computer do you need to run this map? Uh, how big of a computer? Yeah. I don't know. Let's put it this way. I'm going to try to make it so as many people can run it as possible. I don't know what the lowest person running it. It's not going to be a single size map. You know, if you can run a 4X, any 4X map out there, hopefully you'll be able to run this. It has a lot of content and it's huge right now, but uh, we haven't optimized yet. So I'll know better what the map file size is going to be and everything in the next couple weeks because that's when this is the final run. This is polishing and optimization that's why I gave myself a few more weeks to that weekend uh, release because it is it hasn't been optimized in weeks. We're running it live right now on a server. I have a pretty powerful computer, but not everybody that plays... What do you run on here? What do you have for a system, Viper? I got a laptop. Asus a gaming laptop. Asus with it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, with an i7 chip I and uh, with a uh, 3 gigabyte uh, NVIDIA 670. Okay, so it's running on a 670 card. That's pretty good. Um, I'm running a 970, but I, you don't have many issues running, playing on the server, do you, right now? Nope. And it is huge. This thing is probably 300 megabytes larger than I want it to be right now because we haven't optimized anything. So the file size is going to come down. We, I, I really do spend a lot of time optimizing the map. So it, I can't guarantee it's going to run on every, everybody's computer, but we'll get it down to where it will be playable for the majority of the people. Johnny, nine, uh, with a bunch of numbers, 1989-878. Uh, release date is tentatively set for June 18th Saturday. All right. 
so we covered the basics. We didn't get into the feed and everything on the dairy cows, but we will get back to that. And what I meant by the extensive help system, I did a quick, again, this is what you're going to see if you have the help system turned on, which can be turned on and off via the settings menu. And show promptings off. They're gone. So once you get used to it, you don't have to see all the arrows around the map. Show promptings on, and they're there. So you're going to see a lot of these on the map next week. And it says fill steamed potatoes or beet pulp here. So for the earth fruits for these animals, it takes steamed potatoes or beet pulp, which we will get into very soon. You're going to find those for everything. It'll tell you when you go up to the barn. It'll tell you what grains are going to be needed. Uh, it'll tell you to fill your water here. It'll tell you where to pick up your animals on the inside and which all that stuff. Uh, the stream is going to be noon on the 18th, Saturday to midnight, the big stream. On the 14th, we'll be doing Tutorial Tuesday stream, probably starting around 6 o'clock. On the 16th, we'll be releasing the mods ahead of time so people can get going. And that will be uh, Mod Thursday. So, yeah, it's going to be quite the week. Clincy, thank you for the $25 donation. KW, welcome aboard. Th and thanks for... Stopping by and helping out as usual. So we're moving on down to the truffle hogs and the hogs. Well, basically the females we're using for truffle fining. And the males we're going to use for uh, the butcher. Just like we did with the females over the which we'll call it. Yeah, I don't know which barn's which. I can't remember. But let's see if this takes the females. Female not accepted. I still got to mark the triggers just because I don't know where I just put these things in. All right, this must be the male barn because they don't take the females there. Actually, I got some pigs ready over in this breeding barn too. I might as well grab them. Add to my four lousy ones that I have. So you're going to want to breed your animals so you have a constant supply. Let's try this one. I will put labels on them on the outside so it'll be easier to tell and which one, which barn holds which for the males or females uh, because I still don't know myself. It kind of drives me crazy. I keep forgetting. There we go. So the females go into this barn. The males go into the other one. When the females are ready, they become truffle hogs instead of just female hogs. And you can back up to this door. And we have two of them. So we'll take the two that are ready. And what you can do with your truffle finding hogs. <laughs> is very similar to the way the dairy milking procedure works. But we designed, and this area is totally different on the map that you guys will be getting because I didn't reset the textures and everything, but I did find a use for the, the valley down here. Truffle hogging is a very dangerous thing. You'll lose some truffle hogs in the process, just like you lose dairy cows when you milk them, when they go dry permanently. <laughs> Memoir. Funny. All right, so down in here we call this Truffletopia. That's what I named it. You got to kind of be careful because there's a lot of mud. And if I get stuck, we're not going to get to do this demo. So I'm going to try to weave through the mud, get down to where the truffles, truffle hogs can be released into Truffletopia world. I only have two, kind of disappointing for tonight because 
you can literally have 40 hogs in the woods down here searching for truffles. But this is the box, and this will be labeled as well with the arrows where we dump our truffle hogs off. And they're out there in the woods somewhere looking for truffles. And if you go to the factory list again, and you go to Truffletopia at the bottom, we can go and click on Start Produce, and they will start looking for truffles. Truffles are worth a lot of money, so they're not going to find a ton of them, but they will find your truffles. And the hogs are out here somewhere. It's much better when you have like 30 of them, 40 of them running around because you will be able to see them everywhere in the woods. It's pretty cool. When they're done and ready to be picked up, they'll be in this barn over here. You just come over and bring them back, put them in your truffle barn, whatever ones are left. And then you get them ready again, keep feeding them until they're rested up to bring, be brought back to Truffletopia. Your truffles will be able to be picked up here in the custom Chevy, the little custom Chevy and brought off to be sold. We'll let them run a little while. We'll come back a little later and uh, check on our truffle hogs. As a matter of fact, because it's so muddy in here, I'm going to switch vehicles and leave this one right down here. Actually, I can see a female hog is ready to be brought back already. Found... F ah, it looks like they're already done. We found... F nope, they're still searching. But there's one hog in the barn, and they're still looking for truffles. Let's jump to another vehicle. We'll come back and check our truffle output in a little bit. All right, feeding. and Oh, yeah, we have chickens. The built-in chicken barn. You can buy your chickens You can down in the other place. Right now, that's the only way to get chickens. They're stocked up very quickly down there. You bring your chicks in here to be raised into chickens. And once they're raised into chickens, you can either bring them to the meatpacking place, C&M Meat Company, and that's also in the animal animal menu. Right here we have 24 chickens ready to go, and there's still nine chicks to grow up. There's still 60 down there I could pick up and bring over. They replenish pretty quickly down there because right now, currently, we don't have breeding for chickens. But the chicken barn works pretty much same way as anything. It's pretty cool. Memolar, thanks for the $20 donation. Another donation by Memolar, a regular supporter. Thank you so much. So we brought in the chicken barn. And we can fill steamed potatoes or beet pulp there, the water. And you can take out the chickens and you can bring them over to this and this is a place of another placeable object you guys have brought to my attention, the placeable egg laying facility. Some of you are familiar with it, others are not. It will be available in the store as a placeable object for you to put anywhere on your map, and it's an egg laying station right there. Twenty five thousand dollars to buy that. And we just put it right next to the chicken barn because it made sense. You can take chickens out of that barn, drop them off right here. They go inside the egg laying facility. Let's take a look at what's going on at the egg laying facility. Here we have a pallet full of eggs and I could tell because I have the values 1200 eggs. Let's move that pallet. We've got already 2400 eggs. So the eggs are palleted here. In a future update, we will probably add a, after the release, we'll probably add a chicken breeding as well to turn your eggs back into chickens, but I don't know if we're going to get into that before the release. But you can still put some chicks in this barn to turn them into egg. They'll start laying eggs. Let's get rid of this pallet so we can start up that process again. And we'll show you how all that works. 
in the Oak Ridge map, they have a pallet collector right there for those eggs, too. Do they? Uh, yes. I never even thought of putting a pallet collector in there, but we might do that eventually. You know, those are the types of things that aren't going to require a new map update. You know, like I said, there's got to be some cutoffs or it'll never get done. There's, I could guarantee you there's a hundred things that I would love to do before release, but by the time I do those hundred, there's another hundred. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we'll release it. We'll look at what's going to make the next cut and do the next update. But yeah, Pallet Collector would be kind of cool there. We may get it in. Who knows? Our, oh, know why it's not in here? Because it's placeable. His is not. It's built into the map, right? Yeah, his is yeah, built that I wanted to, So you can't do it on the placeable, and I wanted it to be pretty customizable for anybody to put it wherever they want. So, yeah, I think you're going to be stuck without... You'll have to move your own. Chickens are dumped off, and they go into the little booths here, and then they start... This thing hasn't started back up yet. I don't think I don't think or we're out of chickens. Let's check. Uh nope, I got f four chickens left in here. I'll move this out of the way. So you need to put straw, grain, water, and chickens into the barn and they will create pallets of eggs and manure. The manure gets scooped up on the floor right here. Your grains go over here. That gets dumped there. And I believe you just dump your straw right inside the middle here as well. Once you have all those products, this thing actually gets animated and gets going, but I think it'll just take a few minutes. Here, let's let's fast forward a few minutes on the clock and see if we can kick it into gear. There we go. So you can see the egg laying facility. The chickens are in there. The eggs are going down the conveyor and being packed. It's pretty cool. And when it runs out of chickens or any of the other products, it will stop. And you can check all your products right here. So the pallets fill up pretty quick because I just emptied that one not too long ago. So I could see why they'd want a egg pallet collector. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They, it does fill up pretty quick. What I might do is I'll, uh, alter the the uh, capacity on the pallets on this for the placeable because that can be done 1200 is kind of low if we bump them up to 5000 you don't you know you don't need to move 100 pallets around you just have, right. you know what i mean it's it'll last four times as long you'll get much bigger pallets so that'll probably be a good solution to not having to have it'll be the same as having a four pallet egg you know on that map rather than having such a low quantity next the feeding Everybody's familiar with the comp, the, well, not everybody, but the potato washer. I'm not going to run the potato washer, but it takes in, it's placeable as well. I just don't feel like running fuel over here right now. But it is part of the feeding system because you will need to wash your potatoes for the earth fruits for all these new animal barns. And it takes fuel seeds and which are potatoes and water and it outputs I changed ours so that they output manure instead of compost and washed potatoes they output I changed all of them on these so we'll have customized versions to output manure because it solves so many issues overall the map is the manure has many more uses other than just selling off you can use the uh, manure on the orchards. You can use it on, you know, just fertilizing the f tons and tons of different things, whereas compost would just be a sell-off or I'd have to create another use. Also, it requires you to have the mods installed, an extra shovel that can hold compost, and it just gets into a bunch of non-necessary stuff. So we switched them all over. We changed these also so they're higher capacity as well and basically you take your washed potatoes they come out in pallets once they're washed and I'll show you over here when you ch when you changed your compost to manure 
Is it just a matter of changing the XML output? It's built. It's in the mod. I have. I did the mod, and I just changed the output of the play in the placeable mod. So we'll have a customized version for everybody for this map. Okay. And it it just changes it so it outputs manure instead of compost. If you want to use compost, and you you can use the original one, and you'll get compost. But I'm not going to. Uh, find you a shovel to move the compost and all that stuff, which ends up being a pain in the butt. <laughs> you bring the pallets of washed potatoes over to the potato steamer like I just did and do drop it in. It will disappear and that potato steamer will start up. Let me go over here and fast forward Whoops, a couple minutes and see if that kicks in. There you go. So we're now making steamed potatoes with that pallet. And they are piling up. I did include built into the map, so all the fill planes and the shovels will pick up your steamed potatoes. I'll bring a lift over here for that in a minute. And let's see if I can find it. Control 5. So we could take the shovel, any shovel, because I built it into the map. Compost is built into the map too, but for some reason the shovels don't always recognize it. I don't know why. Because they spell them differently. Some put K-O-M-P-O-S-T, some do oh, that C. Could be why. But you know what? It, it ended up being, what do we do with compost? We sell it. That's all. What, what can we do with manure? We can uh, fertilize. We need it for all the trees and all the orchards and all the, the tomato and mushroom barns and all that fun stuff. So much more efficient and easier than having to convert everything or go finding... Uh, you know, another source for manure. So basically, you can take your shovel over here and you can load this shovel up. You can also fill the tippers with this shovel too. And we're just going to grab some in the shovel and test this out. I'm pretty sure. There we got 3,000 steamed potatoes. And the chicken barn hasn't been filled up yet. And I parked the truck right in front of it to make this more difficult. Fill steam potato. I don't know if it'll take a shovel or if we have to use a tipper, but we're going to find out right now. There you go. Whoops. Bam. No, it should do the shovel. It took the shovel. And I even have scoop. It do didn't even. Obviously, we don't have a lot of chickens, so it doesn't hold a lot right now. But there you go. You can fill up with steam potatoes or beet pulp. And we'll show you the beet pulp machinery. Which we also edited the capacities on them. They're so low, you'd be filling them constantly. There is so much to do on the map here as it is that you're, you know, to have a capacity of 6,000 potatoes, you know me, we need things like 50,000 potatoes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not 6,000, which was the standard, you know? So otherwise, you're going to be. Become a slave to a beet pulp machine. <laughs> that one's ready to go. So yeah, the little shovel here will fill all these up because there's not many animals right now. And you have your choice of doing the potatoes. These will also have other sale. We'll be able to sell washed potatoes and beet pulp at the farmers market when it's updated next week, hopefully. Uh for a premium price so every step you do will make them make it worth it to make some just to sell because uh, later on in the broadcast I'll get into a lot of the sell over time points that were in the map are now sell points whereas the major sell over time point that will be left is the farmers market so there will be more products up there as it expands so there we go. We still have 1,800 left in my shovel. 
I can dump it in a tipper if I had one around here and do whatever. Uh, let's see if I can find it. I think there's a tipper down here somewhere. <laughs> All right, so is there a tipper? Nah, not going to worry about it. That covers the potato steamers running, potato washer. The third thing is the beet master turns sugar beets into beet pulp. Works the same way as anything else. Another placeable you have here, it takes sugar beet, water, manure, and out, it takes sugar beets and water and outputs manure in beet pulp. Let's see, where am I here? I'll bring... It's got to be a closer vehicle than that. Nothing with just one tipper on it. I guess over here we have one. Alright, let's go back over here for now. Let's see how our uh, truffle hogs are doing. Uh, the from the factory we're Truffletopia. We found 20 truffles. We have one hog left to bring back home. So we lost one. It's much better if you bring like a big group of 30 at a time because you'll lose like two out of the 30 or maybe three. But when you're bringing just two, it seems like you're going to lose one almost every time. We'll grab the one female hog and bring it back and get it rested for finding more truffles. So that's pretty much how the truffle hogs work. We have truffles down there, very few, but I'll bring the Chevy down in there and we'll bring them up and you'll just, well, you'll be able to see. I think Lydia's right now is buying truffles. <laughs> DJL D Iceman six 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 or DJ Iceman? I think that's what it is. DJ Iceman six six six. Thanks for the follow. Sometimes it's like deciphering names is not my thing. <laughs> I don't do license plates either. Let's see. So cell points. Let's go check the cell points. That was the other major addition this week. The shops. Lydia's is buying truffles, and look at the price for a thousand truffles compared to everything else on the list. A thousand truffles would get you sixty-five thousand five hundred and thirty-five per thousand. That's quite high. So truffles are worth a lot. If you get a lot of truffle hogs going, you can make a ton of money down there. And you can uh, bring back the ones that survived the truffle hunt and get them ready to go out again. If I can find the right barn, you remember what side the female goes in? <laughs> Anybody? I think it's over here. There we go. Truffle hogs back in there. Just take care of them. You'll get a big batch ready. We're just starting it up. We don't have a lot of hogs in our barns yet, but you'll be able to eventually take loads of 30, 40 down to the truffle topia, leave them off, go back an hour later and pick up a whole mess of truffles. Let me find my custom chev. Where did I leave that off? up here. Let's go pick up our truffles. Now, I don't have a fill plane in this yet for them, but it should pick them up. Well, before we go down there, I'm going to just open up the store one more time and show you guys. Under the placeables. So, the new placeables that you will have that are supported fully are the Flagel Beatmaster, the egg laying station. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention earlier is 
one of the things I'm cutting back on right now is we're going to still use the mushroom houses and the tomato houses from PV15 version 2 just because of the quantity right now of stuff that's in this map <laughs> I don't know if it can handle much more <laughs> and as a placeable they can be added or removed as needed but the you can also get a lot more output we already have like 10 of them on the map so that we're gonna stick to for now because they're working they're working well um, let's see what else we have here you all get the cow breeding and a pig breeding facility the potato steamer and the potato washer tomato house and all this other fun stuff that we've already covered in previous broadcasts one of the things I wanted to show you guys though he fixed Dave's mini game. <laughs> one of the quick things I want to show you guys is we've been doing a lot and one of the things we really overlooked is the orchards. They've been tweaked like crazy as well. You never really even saw a fully built one. But on our way to Truffletopia, we're going to take a little side uh jaunt here and show you our orchards in action because we have them everywhere on the map right now and basically what an orchard is and this is how we do it the orchards are buildable objects that are placed on the ground and they require some of the fruit from the original trees which we have pear trees over here that are just regular individual pear trees just like we have in PV 15 version 2 that you can offload but it you got to you got to start with those and then you can upgrade to an orchard that gets built by supplying 10,000 of the fruit plus some manure. But we never showed you a fully built orchard and here is what your fully built orchards look like. This one's out of water, but it it can hold up to 10,000 pears and it's got a little bit of manure, but it's just a little orchard that is a buildable object. You got to supply cut wood as well as uh, block and a couple other things the the fruit and I think manure to build the orchards when the orchards are done they work just the same way as a fruit tree except for mass quantity so instead of getting 500 off of one tree you can get 10,000 out of a single orchard and the orchards I shrunk them scaled them down in size so you can fit more on the map and put them around wherever you want I got lots of places that were designed to be able to hold orchards uh, along the railroad tracks was a great place for building some so there's an orange orchard with 10,000 oranges ready to go as you can see we didn't really cover and you didn't get to see a fully built orchard but we've got them all now I was making the map more single player friendly. Is the map more single player friendly? Let's put it this way. This map is so much more than I, anything I've ever designed before. It depends on your mindset. If you're a completionist, it might drive you nuts. <laughs> if you're there's so many ways to play this map if you're expecting to get every factory running and everything at the same time and have everything pumping it, it might be very difficult if you want to get all the content done and build your orchards and build all the factories there's fewer factories to build the crop yields are way higher things are grouped together there's an invisible train because we're on the server I just ran into things are grouped together better for single player ability I designed it so that it would be easier for single players to do that being said there's with the new system of buying and purchasing factories and everything there's so many different ways to play the game now you can do you literally don't even have to ever build a factory if you don't want to you will have to if you want to finish the fairgrounds you'll have to build the factories but as far as the other factories that are purchasable you don't ever have to buy them you can 
sell to them and buy from them and still fill up the fairgrounds with those products without having to actually own the factory. So it all depends what you want to do. Uh, you can buy low, sell high. You can... It's, there's going to be so many different ways which makes this very unique to actually play this map that I think it'll fit many more gameplay styles. To tell them the restriction on not owning the factories. When you don't own a factory, you cannot... You, you can sell to it and buy from it. That's pretty much the only restriction. Now I thought you had to be admin to... Oh, yes. You will have to be logged in as admin on a server. If you're playing on a server, only the admin can buy and sell from a factory that is not owned. That is one of the protections, I guess, so that people don't spend all the money on the server. So you will have to be logged in as admin in order to buy and sell from the factories if you're running a server with the map on it. Or somebody will have to be. That current is the way it currently stands anyway and I don't know if they're going to change that at all with the script set but any plans to update Pleasant Valley version 2 to the new system I really don't have plans because what did I hit there is there something there oh check this out I found the bug nothing there Oh, it's an Invisipig. <laughs> the pigs are invisible. They're supposed to be hidden underground, not above ground when they're not in there. Well, we'll have to change that. Um, I look at it this way. I could spend uh, three months changing Pleasant Valley version 2 to this system, but then it's not Pleasant Valley version 2. It's more like this would always be better than that, you know. That's that's the problem. It's Pleasant Valley is a different game style. I'd much rather spend my time building a new map with a new concept that I have. I have a couple different concepts than go back and redo what's been done. Sure, there are a couple things that would be nice to add to it, but I don't think this new system, maybe the mix feeder or something like that would be a good idea for Pleasant Valley version 2 down the road maybe adding some of that stuff in but I like to look move forward this map will take you guys quite a while to complete and we'll start another project I have actually three of them in mind I don't know which one's gonna work <laughs> so I'm not gonna get there you'll have to stay tuned after this release but after the release of this it'll be more focused on uh, making this better still than going back to Pleasant Valley version 2. History has been written with that map. It's a great map. I think that this is going to be a little bit different for people. Some people may like the style of that better because it's more streamlined. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to, you know what I mean? You got to build the factories. You got to do certain steps. Here you're more open to decide how you want to play. which is the main difference. And what I was trying to actually accomplish on this map, it can be played in so many different ways. Yeah, this. so there's some ideas I've been passing around. I just keep coming up with new ideas of things I'd love to try, but then again, we're creeping up on FS17, and I don't know how that's going to work out. From what I've heard, there's not... I don't know how many people have already decided not to buy it. <laughs> I don't honestly think, and this is the problem I run into, I think FS17 is going to be good. With it's, But I don't think right now it doesn't look like it's going to be... It's going to take a long time to catch up to where the mods are on this map right now. You know what I mean? It's... <laughs> Today I found a site that already has FS17 mods already built. How is that even possible? It hasn't been released. Yeah, no. They um, they already had them listed already. It's from certain people that have access to the 
program already. Huh. Well, it'll be. I'll have to see if I find it and give you the link to it. Yeah, I wouldn't know. It's kind of weird because I don't think. I mean, you'll have mods, you'll have vehicles, you'll have some, but it's the scripts that people have written. And we rely on people to come back and write these awesome scripts to do the stuff we do. And in order to get to where we are now, look at where we're at the end of the life of 15 and we're just getting the new script. Karanu, Karanu, thanks for the follow. So catching up to where we are, I think that this map here is going to long last into anybody wanting to play 17. They'll play 17 on the default map, just check out the few new features, but to get the detail and the level of qu the quantity of stuff to do into a map is going to take a good long time. We'll start developing a map, and we'll put out some good maps, but it's not going to be up to the level of this. There were many people that told me they weren't going to play. They were playing Industries until my first map came out over here from the 13 version just because there was nothing that even came close, you know. <laughs> that you could find on there for a long on 15 for a long time. So I think it's Danny and me logged into the server and I only have four uh 20 truffles, but let's see what I get for him. Uh 20 truffles was from two hogs was a little more than a thousand, so times that by 3 about $3,000 for 20 truffles isn't bad. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know. I almost feel like designing another map for FS15 with a couple of ideas I have, but it wouldn't be finished until after. But it'd probably be finished. Well, I did it last time. You know, I finished Industries like a month before 17 came out, and many people played it long into that. So we may do that. Because I've got a few ideas I never got a chance to get to here. And it gives me something to to toy with. But for a little while, we're going to look into ways to keep improving on what we have here. Yeah. Modding groups got frustrated. There, I'm Converting mods is one thing. I mean, taking a vehicle and converting it is a lot different than taking the universal process kit and converting it. Normally, mods that involved, like the UPK kit, have to be rewritten from scratch. And it probably will be have to be again. And will he do it? I don't know if more 2000 will come back and do another UPK kit. We don't know if these Russian guys are going to put together another script kit with the mud and the stuff that's in there. There's so much in here right now that Eventually, somebody might come. You never look at the things that were in 13 that still did not get into 15 because of the new scripts. Jack Sparrow, Sparrow, -ho. thanks for the follow. My biggest disappointment we haven't seen planes, no flying planes. We had them in 13, we could do crop dusting, we never got them in 15 at all. So you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, there's very few modders that can convert properly, and some of the larger modders have issues because whatever Giants does, converting, like I said, the UPK kit to an FS17 version. Channel, VIP ER278, link to FARMING2015MODS.com. I'll check that out later. I think it's just an announcement. I don't think he has actual mods in it. Yeah. Oh, they did that last time on that same site. They released okay. that they would have 2017 mods long before they even came out with 2017. We'll have to see what Giants does. Uh, the problem is, I think their engine's starting to get outdated. <laughs> 
one of the projects I have is to work on Unreal Engine 4 myself and see what see what we can come up with for a farming game. You never know. We've I've been learning it. Uh, it would be a long, long, long-term project, but it would be nice to see some of my ideas put into their proper form <laughs> rather than having to deal with giant's constraints, silly constraints, you know? <laughs> You guys have no idea what I'd be capable of if I could do my own game. Holy crap. So what did we not cover? All right, we pretty much covered the animals for tonight. Any questions on those, feel free to throw them up. They're limited, but they're easy. Uh, and there's a purpose because there's just way too much stuff going on on this map to make it too complicated right now. We might add some in in the future, but we're going to see. We'll get user feedback. That's one of the best things about the first release. User feedback is crucial. We're one group, a very small group of testers. We like to keep it that way so things don't get leaked or, you know. But user feedback on how you guys play the game is going to mold the next 1.1 version. You might find that factories aren't certain factories aren't producing very fast as you need them, um, or the way you we need that feedback. And at that point, you know, we'll decide if we want to add another animal type in or what you guys think. So that's all, all to be determined later. Um, there's a ton in here, that's for sure. <laughs> The other thing we did this week was the cell points. So let's go over some of the cell points. Originally, last time, we only had Lydia's Farm Shop ready. Uh, we'll go to... We have the grain elevator, which pretty much sells just the grains. Wheat, barley, rice, oat, millet, sorghum, corn, rye, soybean. These are all on the map in their places. I'm not going to drive to every one. Uh, but I'll show you the major ones that have had some significant changes. Uh, other thing was, if you guys remember, some of the triggers weren't working at the dairy and the warehouse. That's all working now. That's all taken care of, the little bugs. Uh, the Pleasant Valley Museum, I think we added that as a sell point the last time as well. So that has several items. Now, these items do change. You'll see there's uh, just a recap. There's the price that they're buying for in... Th here, let me see if I can get in a better background. Over the grass, it's easier to read this stuff on the stream. I think. Darker background. So, you have the price, the product, the price they're buying it for the quantity that they already have out of the quantity that they will accept. When the number gets close to how much they accept, it turns red, so there's not very much room. And those items fluctuate constantly, so it adds a whole new uh, outlook to your economy. If all the sell points aren't buying a certain product, like Pepsi is pretty much full at the museum, if we can't find a place to sell Pepsi, you might want to think of about making more Mountain Dew over there than Pepsi because there's still room for Mountain Dew or the Wild Cherry Pepsi down here. There's tons of room for another 200000 to be sold. So that adds to the economy as well. Dancing Donuts has been converted into a little donut shop which takes bacon and ham and sugar for their donuts, sausage, wheat flour, coffee, soy milk. McDonald's now takes some bacon and soy milk, chicken fillets, ham, coffee, sugar, sausage, wheat flour, ground beef. And these are all the places down along the waterfront. We can kind of head over that way. Some of these used to be sell over time points, and they are no longer. They are just sell points. No, Lamillo, good question. We cannot because it takes them off the map. If you put, if you're using vehicle group switcher and you park the vehicle in the garage that takes it off the map, 
it will have to be regrouped. So what we do is we use the garages for the implements, like trailers and stuff that don't go in the vehicle group switcher, and it still helps out a ton. We just park the vehicles outside, and we'll put the implements away, like plows and stuff, into the garages. When stuff goes into the new garages, if it's a vehicle that's in the group switcher, it takes it out, unfortunately. You like the percent screen over the numbers. Yes, you have the percentages. There you go. That's another good way of looking at it. So you could see how much, yep, 96% fill with soy milk. So down here we have the McDonald's cell point. There's a lot of them right here in this area because this is where the restaurants are. Applebee's right behind us has, oh, let me uh, turn off this so I can move my camera. Applebee's now is a cell point right here for several products. as well as the Piggly Wiggly, which was a huge sell-over time point before, now is a regular old grocery store, uh, selling lots and lots of products at the Piggly Wiggly. So this is a very big hub area for selling off stuff. There's the Piggly Wiggly right in the bottom corner here. You go around back to sell off at the Piggly Wiggly. And the port. The port is one of the major ones. I'm trying to include many because these do fill up. You can easily fill them up. I filled up all the classic chips the other day selling them off, and I didn't have a place to sell them all. So I tried to include as many, and the port had a major overhaul. The port has five docks. Currently not numbered, but they will be. And we'll head over to the port and show you exactly. The docks are arranged by item type, pretty much. And we actually added some changes down here to the port to be fitting with it. I will number the dock areas as we enter the port, but currently they're not. They do wrap around one through five, so it's pretty simple. I'll start at this end. And down here is cell point one. Dock one is all your grains. Just another bunch of places to sell your straight grains. Right here at the grain ship in dock one. Port dock two right up a little ways sells some of the flowers, lime, sugar it's secondary production items like the oat flour, calcium carbonate you can sell them directly here if you get an excess it's not a very big selling dock but uh, port dock 3 as we go around is through here we put another ship in as you can see, a container ship for port dock three. And this one will take your blocks, your pallets, your textile, glue, paper, charcoal, resin, bird seed, cut wood, steel, drywall boards, basically all of your additional building products and textiles and stuff like that. Dry goods stuff that you have after you're done building all your factories. You all have stuff to sell off. There's a place for it. Port Dock 4 is around the corner over here. And they take a lot of the factory products like soups. And the rice is wrong. i got to fix that. It should be saying uh, something different. Crispies. Rice Krispies instead of rice. Messed that up. <laughs> uh, but they will take... All the cereals, lots of those types of products, and soups right here. Uh, and your chips are also sold there at Port Dock 4. What is the blue conveyor used for? Oh, we have that. No, he was asking for 
he wished that there was a conveyor that put the bales up on a hayloft. Oh yeah. And Mahu has Mahu has that particular building built I've tried on his it. site. Yeah, it didn't work very well for me when I tried it though. I I I'm pretty strict about making sure things work well. <laughs> Unfortunately. Support Doc Five is beverages and some bread and some more products. So there's a whole bunch of beverages, a pizza breads and beverages look like they're all over here at port dock five so you have five docks at the port to sell and they're very easy to access and give us lots of opportunities to lots of places to sell products wanted to have multiple places for several of the different products the speedway is also a sell point as well now And we'll zip over to the speedway and we'll show you where that we passed it already. No, the ships do not come and go. They stay where they are. I'm not going to get into the ship oh, and the moving train thing, the ones that stop and load. Uh, a little bit too confusing to get it done right now. Maybe look at it again in the future, but I haven't figured it out yet and I can't spend another couple days trying to figure out that system so we're going to go with our current system the way it is uh, speedway products get dumped off right here kind of things you'd like to have at a speedway like whiskey yeah and Home Depot is now also a, a sell point for stuff that you would find in a Home Depot hopefully cement Cement can be sold at Home Depot now, by the way. Paper, charcoal, resin glue, cut wood, steel, drywall, boards, block, bird seed, compost. Hey, you can sell compost at the Home Depot. If you do decide to use the compost versions of the regular versions of that mod, you can actually sell the compost at Home Depot. I put it in there so it is supported. But you have to find your own vehicles. The freight yard is on there with several products as well as the shipping office now the shell stations have changed and you guys some of you guys are gonna oh I gotta fix that mark that down fuel needs to have a price put in or it can't be so it does they are buying fuel but it doesn't have a price I hope I can add a fuel price I never tried that but I wanted to make it so you can actually sell fuel at the fuel station. We'll look into that this week. I'll put it on my notes because there's no price. Same with water. They're buying it, but I don't think they're going to pay you anything for it right now. But both shell stations hopefully will buy fuel. Uh, for those of you who have excess fuel that you don't know what to do with, along with several other uh, products. So there's the Shell Station West and the one down by the Piggly Wiggly, which is the Shell Station North. And that's all the sell points that are currently in the map. Tons of them. There's hopefully every product is covered. I think there's a place to sell everything. A couple of things will have to be added. Exactly what we need. Whiskey for the... It's not for the drivers. It's for the fans. <laughs> no, the damage mod's not going to come in during it just because of the issues it has. Uh, now, if, yeah, it just... Too many issues with the damage mod and the mud and everything else going on that it was costing a ton of money, even with our trimmed down version. Now I think that covers the sell points, but there have been a few other little tweaks, and uh, I'm going to uh, just go over a couple of those before we end tonight while I can still talk as my face is blowing up. National Gypsum has had the quantity increased, how fast it outputs at the National Gypsum Factory. But I also added a second line of production over at National Gypsum. 
and added fuel as the power source for the second line of production. So if you fuel it up with fuel over on this side and you have all the products, you can pretty much double your production speed at National Gypsum, which has already been doubled before that. So, yeah. And I fixed the piles. They now show correctly over here, Viper. That's okay. Right. So they're, they're, that's all. Yeah, was, I noticed was, the other day was, still wasn't fixed. Nope, that was fixed today. I've been playing, actually, extensively for the past couple days myself, just driving products around and testing things, trigger position, just tons of things, trying to make sure things aren't getting overlooked because we're at that point where things have been forgotten. I mean, that wasn't even on a list. But I realized that the other day because I went over there and saw all the piles there and there wasn't enough. You know, we forgot to write it down that night and that happens. So I'm rediscovering a lot of things that we've said, oh yeah, that needs to be fixed. But they're getting done. Um, follow the Trello board. You'll see a lot of lists. We are going. There's a lot of little things on there that have been popping on today that need attending to. GPC is a sell point, and I didn't even put it in on this this list. So that'll that's gonna change. We're gonna turn that one. See, there's I gotta put a note for that one too. Convert GPC over to the new system. It just sits there on the old system right now. So lots and lots lots done. Little bit to go. We're getting closer. Yeah. It does not work great at all. You can really damage, completely damage a vehicle. It's bad enough on this map that we, you get charged if you reset a vehicle. <laughs> then uh, the damage mod as well. It, it caused more headaches. Even after we dumbed it down to barely any damage, it still caused too much damage and too much price to keep up with this map. Do I have a trimmed down version of the PV map? Not currently. That If you need a trimmed down version of that Pleasant Valley map, version 2. It, well, uh, just curious, Iron X, this is why you're asking. Is it too big for you to play or is it not run on your system? Oh, your PC is in need of an update. If if you can't run the PV map version 2, then you probably won't be able to run this one. <laughs> and that one is pretty trimmed down as it is. There may be a possibility that I will do a trimmed down version of this if I can't get the file size down to a reasonable level where a lot of people can run it. But at this point... I think we left out a lot of little things, though. You notice there's not a lot of decor around the the uh, land. And we have mentioned in the past, and that's another thing I'll look into after the release, of creating uh, decorative packages that are add-ons for those that can run it. You drop it in as a mod, and the dick de de decor will show up. Kick it good. Thanks for the follow. Another follower. Anybody that's following, just remember, we're going to have all you new visitors. We are getting close to the release of this map. On June 18th, we are going to be having a release party giveaway. That whole week, on the 14th, we'll have Tuesday Tutorial Tuesday. On 16th, we're going to release the mods ahead of time so people can get downloading them. And we'll show you what mods are going to be necessary and what are extras. Big Daddy's also been around working on some new surprises for mods for you guys, especially you guys that like the fifth wheel stuff. Uh, I don't know where he is tonight, but he is putting together some cool stuff right now as well as now that he's done with school. So there will be more mods coming that you guys will be able to use. <laughs> We need to get Iron X. It's a new computer. Um, I yeah, you must have a pretty old one. If uh, for version two, it runs pretty well on pretty low systems because it's pretty trimmed down as it is. But there was a lot. It, you might have better luck with 1.3, but I think 1.3 still had bugs in it. 
because we did add a lot into 2.2 .2 on that. But this one here, oddly enough, this script system is taking a lot of the overhead off of the Giants engine. This whole new menu system, the way the factories run, it's a lot less intensive than the UPK kit stuff was. Oh, you got a lot more in this map with a lot less stuttering and a lot less glitches in the last map. <laughs> That's cool, Tarazby. The your 23rd wedding anniversary gift. Well, that's 23 years. Let's see, where was I? This map, graphics cards. That's where the pro, the only issues are going to be is your, your memory and graphics right now. Processing, there's not as much going on, I think, as even in PV version 2, believe it or not processing wise that's why we're running as smooth as we are currently the map file size is huge though it's about three times it's gonna come down so I don't want to panic anybody but we've got a lot of stuff and that stuff is easy to shrink it's just not gonna look as good so maybe we will do a if if there's a lot of people not able to run it after we get the final version out we can look into reducing graphics either further you might Drop it, dropping some excess stuff off the map to do a trim down version. It may be necessary this time around, but that will wait on and get some user feedback and see see what's going on out there. It's very hard to tell how everybody's gonna how it's gonna run. But if you have any halfway decent system, you shouldn't have any issue. <laughs> You you got a book, Lamillo, huh? But what what kind of book did you write? You can go on to Twitch and read excerpts from chapters, and people will donate. <laughs> I saw I was watching a guy play some music on uh, Creative Channel last night. He was really good, and people were throwing money at him like crazy. Will the PV Rivers map be under 750 megabytes? I certainly hope so. It isn't right now, but I certainly hope it'll be under that for sure. I want to get it down. I'm, we'll see. There's, a, there's so much that has to be done. If you look at the Trello page, I have a series of steps that I go through. The first one is the map has to be exported into and basically remade. What exporting a map does is it removes all of the excess objects that aren't being used, the files that are still in the map that aren't being used anymore but are within the map. So that alone could drop 60 to 100 megs right there. It's hard to tell. Well, how, how did you get it uploaded to the server if the server only maxes out at 750? Uh Andre's server where we're running on. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> so, yes, I want to get it down to... I'd like to get it down to 500. I'm shooting to get it under 500 for anybody that's running on a server that maxes out a file size of 500. So, we'll be working hard on it. I think it can be done. I won't know for sure until we uh, get busy with it. So, as I was saying, the first step of the process is eliminating stuff that's not being used that's still in the map file. That's That alone second step is uh, what I have a program that I bought or actually was bought for me with donations <laughs> I think Big Daddy bought it for me actually that's called duplicate picture finder and what that does is it searches for like images that are exact duplicates but it doesn't search just the name it actually searches the image so if it detects say a cement texture that looks very familiar to another cement texture I get a, a vi visual view of all of those and I can say okay 
And as we're just let me backtrack really quickly and tell you when when this modding is done, and I'm going to give you a perfect example of exactly what happens when you're building a map from pieces that other people are using that other people have built. The mods themselves have often used the same textures, but every time you input import it into your map, if it you're importing all the same files duplicate. Sometimes they're not even the same textures, but they could be. You know what I mean? So you have, and I'm going to give you a perfect example. I imported this animal barn here as an animal barn, and it's a pig barn or a dairy barn. It's the same darn barn as the cow barn with graphics and everything, but I have not optimized the map to remove the duplicates. So both the dairy barn and the pig barns are pointing to two like versions of the same file, basically, in my map file. What I have to do is find all of those instances first, remove the duplicates, and link them to relink them in the map file. It is a lengthy process because I have to edit the the file itself now, the map file, but we'll point it to the same image so that we don't ha and then we delete one of the images and voila, if that image is 1.2 megabytes for this one and it's 1.2 for the other one, just by linking all the barns onto the same one, you have cut down a file, just one file, graphic, and it cuts it down by 1.2 megs before zipping actually that is. So another instance will happen is you'll get things like okay we have this this cracked texture here that's on the the little the, the ground around this little thing we, we'll look into ways can we replace this cracked texture with the same texture that this cement texture is right here because it might even look better so we look into things like that the cement texture here is different than the cracked texture or that's surrounding it and if we re can replace the texture and it looks good, then we don't need to have them both and we can remove a texture completely. With all the buildings and all the stuff that's been brought into this map, there are probably 30 different cement textures that all look slightly different. And as you look around a map, yeah, it's cool that you have these different looks to things, but I always go for function over the prettiness of everything. You know, what good is if it looks real good but people can't play it? So it might be as simple as turning this wall texture that's right here in front of me with the little spots to look more like the ground texture that's right here or use the same wall texture that's on this. You can see right here on this little building alone, there's three different textures for the walls. And the ground and they're all cement so we'll look into ways of reusing swatches to cover the basic swatches to cover most of the map that'll reduce it severely and then the next part of the texture is taking a look at the textures and reducing the image sizes without causing blurriness effects and there's some really good examples I've done in the past of people showing people where uh, I have a cow that was up at the it's at the fairgrounds in the last map and in this one that let me find my vehicle I was in I leave things around all the time it's the same but basically the cow is covered in a skin that's a 512 pixel by a 512 pixel image which you know is a relatively reasonable small size and you get this nice looking cow it's it's the same cow I think that's right here on the left the problem with that was that no it wasn't that one it was this one here I believe that the eyeball of this cow, which you really can't even freaking see, was a 2048 pixel by 2048 pixel image 
that was like three and a more than three megabytes big <laughs> for the eyeball and it and it only needs to cover the eye socket for crying out loud there's a lot of people that do modding like that give you a picture of an eyeball that's that's a five megabyte eyeball file when it could be a three kilobyte eyeball file so we look at all the every little thing that's been brought in and look at it into proportion of what size it needs to be and bring down the things that we can to cause without without getting you really blurry ugly looking buildings the things that need the most attention to stay nice looking are the items with text on them that that's the main thing if you start bringing down the quality of an image that covers a large area and it has a lot of text then it kind of ends up getting the text blurry and it does it starts to not look good. So the palettes and stuff at the warehouse tend to have a little bit higher image quality so that when you look at them they really look a little bit nicer. Those are the types of things. But when you're looking at cement walls and stuff uh, they can be brought down quite a bit. So that's pretty much the steps that we have to go through. Lots of little steps. And I uh, don't know if I could show it here, but Pepsi palette graphics, side graphics. We don't want it to look blurry. It looks pretty clear. Everybody can tell it's Pepsi. Those are the kind of graphics we try to keep up higher. So you got a nice looking palette of Frito-Lay chips. So they're a little bit higher quality. Uh, things like ground texture or building wall textures you know the cement around here some of it can be a little bit different or lower quality but anyhow I think we covered a lot here tonight anybody has any other questions we're nearing the end of the we're getting closer to the release date anybody has any questions they can throw them up there I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out before we sign off tonight. We'll, we'll go over one more time. Next stream date will probably be next Friday if all goes well. And I may even start... I actually am toying with doing a recap show. I don't know. Would anybody be interested in a recap show like Sunday? Early Sunday. Always crazy for fun. Thanks for the follow. Like a, I'm saying like a noon or maybe a 2 o'clock Eastern time Sunday recap show of what we do on Fridays. And yeah, go for the, go for it there, Iron Axis. You have a question? We'll try to answer it. Yeah, I'd like to know if anybody would be interested in a recap show of what we covered. We have a lot of people that can't make it too sometimes on these night broadcasts because they're overseas and stuff. So I may do something on Sunday to do a recap of what we've done and maybe see what we've left out. You never know. I'd like to give you guys some more time to earn some more points. But other than that, we'll be broadcasting Friday with the next, the latest updates. We'll get in closer when we get to... I do not have a spare computer. I only have this one, and oh, God willing, it doesn't fail. <laughs> You're always willing to watch me drive around my maps. <laughs> That's pretty much what I do, drive around them. Uh, and and talk. Yes, have a recap. I, I could do that. We'll try to shoot for an early recap of what we've brought up today. Because you never know. I might have missed some things. I'll look it over after I'm done and see if I left anything out. We'll try to shoot for a recap on Sunday around... 2 or 3 p.m. Usually I'm I'm good by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm awake by then. <laughs> and then we'll go for Friday's show, which will be next week's. And then we'll have a couple more of those. And then Tuesday the 14th will be Tutorial Tuesday. I've got s Thursday the 16th will be Mod Thursday. We'll release the mods ahead of the map so you guys can start downloading. And check them out 
and then on the 18th we will have our huge uh, Chetty82. I try to put them up on the YouTube channel. Check my YouTube link. Some, t some of them got missed when I was in the hospital. Uh, I don't know if that one actually posted the last one or not. But we try to get them up on YouTube. I, g I went, I posted it. I go to the hospital. I get back. It said my YouTube export failed. I don't know if it did or not. Most of them are there. Something. Oh, I was away. Did, did somebody ask about number nine? Number nine? Yeah, it's not up on uh, YouTube or your Twitch. Oh, number nine. I could try to get number nine up again if it's still... It's not on Twitch anymore? No, that, I couldn't find it the other day when somebody asked problem. me about it. Uh, the export failed, and I, after I did it, I went into the hospital, and uh, my mind hasn't been right since, so I might not be able to recover episode nine if it's not there. I'll check it out, see if it's in my possibility of re-exporting it. But if not, I might have lost nine. We try to get them up there. It's just been a bad two weeks. <laughs> it happens. That's why I'm not promising. That's why I say tentative date. I may have to go to the hospital if the swelling doesn't start go back down pretty soon. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Kevin, 334433, thank you for the follow. All right, so any of you guys that are new followers, just remember... 18th, the big 18th. You might want to even show up on the 14th and the 16th, even if you don't want the map and you just want to be entertained because you are earning points towards the big giveaways. And between Viper278, make sure you give him a follow as well. V I P E R. What is, what is it, Viper? Is it just 278? Yeah. Yeah, correct. V I P E R 278. Follow his Twitch channel. And Big Daddy, B I G D A D Y 1 D and Daddy, D A D Y 012678. You want to follow him as well. The three of us will be broadcasting the release party on the June 18th. And so far, we have collected over, between us, over. $1,200 in prize money for giveaways. And those giveaways will primarily be Steam Wallet codes from me. I don't know what Viper has planned completely. I'm still figuring that out. <laughs> I've got Steam Wallet codes. I've already got over $200 worth of Steam Wallet codes purchased. I've got some Amazon dot com gift codes purchased. They're very simple. They'll be easy to give away because all I need is your email address and I send you the code and when you redeem it in your Steam wallet, you go to Steam, add your wallet gift card code and voila, it adds the money to your account. So they'll be in various denominations and there's a site I bookmarked called gift.com. I'll be giving away some codes to that as well down below which you'll be able to pretty much purchase your own gift cards for many many different places through there so those are my three main places and I'm gonna stay away from the graphics cards and everything but we will look into things like uh, gift cards for I'm gonna look into seeing about like places like Newegg and Amazon.com actually does have graphics cards and stuff. So we want to give you guys the option. I don't want to buy something that not everybody can use. I want you guys to win stuff and have the choice of what you want to do with it. So there will be, on that day, 12-hour stream, about $1,200. So, yeah, we'll be kicking out some serious prizes. And... The more you watch between now and then, there you go, press F1. The more you watch between now and then, the uh, more points you'll earn to get into those drawings. And that's pretty much how it works. 
as I aimlessly drive around the map showing you some things. Let me go for a little ride. You know what? I'm not going to drive. I'm going to boat now. <laughs> well, tune in for... I, Iron Axis, all I can say is keep watching till the release date because there will be gift cards and there will be opportunities for you possibly, like if you win a gift card from gift.com, you can turn it into a new egg gift card right through their website, a Best Buy gift card right through their website, a Walmart gift card, and you might be able to score yourself 100 bucks for computer upgrades to one of those sites. You never know, you know. That'll be a get you some extra memory or uh, a little bit of help toward a graphics card. You never know who's going to win what. I figured I'd take the boat for a ride because you guys haven't seen it run around a little bit in a while. Yeah, the boat's pretty awesome. We haven't even built any of the fishing docks on this map yet, but they will be lining the shore down here. Any other questions out there? The new background of the menu transparent. Oh yeah? There's a new HUD mod out there? I'll have to look into that as I pick up my bandage here around my face. It's annoying me. Sorry if you guys heard that. The boat, it this boat, we went with this boat because it's really stable. It's pretty kind of cool, to, fun to drive, too. Although it has stone in it, and I still have to make a way to offload the boat of excess products. That's on my list. Because I don't think any place needs stone anymore. There are docks for the ferry, and there are silos to load up along the water uh, for the ferry. I was talking a question for you about that. What's up? It was when I was bringing sand and gravel to the Kellogg's. You know, it didn't. Uh, it was full, so I had excess left over. Yes. I couldn't unload the boat anywhere. Yeah, that is what I'm working on. That's one of the things we're looking. Either I'm trying to get the script that works on that water trailer to work on the boat, so any excess could just be dumped. I got the light thing on. But if not, I'll probably have a, a landfill in the water somewhere that you can pull up to and offload any little bit of excess that you overstocked. So that is definitely something that has to be done. Could you make like a multi-silo trigger or something that will take all the products? I can make a trigger that will take one product at a time and delete it and then take another product. It'll take any product with the UPK kit. Uh, there's the entire map in its not so great glory. It's kind of crowded with all the stuff on it. There's the, and I'm going to do a little bit. I have an idea to make the water stand out a little better that some people ask. So the PDA map will be redrawn one more time as well. It's kind of hard to see on that background. Yeah, someone asked earlier about showing the water on the map. The water is shown as rock right now, but I do, I'm do. i going to put a, a blue plane in and then take the photograph so it'll be replace the water with blue rather than redrawing the whole thing. I think it'll work because sort of like the water down in the, the texture of the water is different down in the sugar beet area or the sugar beet, the cranberry area. Yeah, 27, 28 fields. Yeah, so we, I think you'll see a better PDA map next week as well. So all the finishing touches. Let's see. The drawbridge does not work on servers. You are correct. That We did try the drawbridge, so we made our own. And we made something that does work on a server. I loved the drawbridge. It was our first thing. I had it in. I had, I think, three or four of them in. And then all of a sudden we realized, oh, crap. Not everybody 
the drawbridge would not work. It's sort of like the Invisitrain problem on the server. <laughs> you might see that it's up, but it's down, and you might not, you know, it just messed everything up. Is there a way to have a zoom on the map? Uh, not built into the game. The map is only way... It, you got the mini-map in the bottom left corner that zooms in on the area right now that we're in. Or you have the full-size map, which shows where you are in the whole scheme of things, which I am right by the freight yard in the middle, kind of right here. You can see me traveling because I'm in a green vehicle. But there's no way to zoom in on that. Let me uh, turn that back off. I'll just drive around a little bit more. Bridge up. I know there's no water under the bridge. That gets fixed in the last version, as I had mentioned earlier. Because every time you save a version with the bridges down, it deletes the water underneath them. Kind of weird. So there are docks al all along the l area where you could pull, pull the ferry up to. Um... Most of the docks, however, serve dual purpose. And they are also loading points at many of them. But up by the uh, shell station and the store, there are docks that are just there to dock your boats. Field status has a map overlay that is bigger than a nine key. Does it really? Where is that? I don't even... I. I haven't even... Oh, crap. Now I got... Oh, that's my scan button. you got to teach me how to use this again. It's been so long. The map overlay... Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. I need to know what all the buttons do. Oh, that moves it. That's right. Anybody else remember? What, to move the uh, HUD uh, around? The map overlay. Is there a map overlay? For, he said map overlay on field status. I don't know if I recall seeing it. I have not seen that either. Oh, look at We have toggle. He says, he says numpad enter. Numpad enter. Huh. Awesome. <laughs> Here, let's close this down. So that's it. Uh, you have to have field status open. Oops. There you go. Numpad enter. Cool. Didn't even know that existed. But there you go. You got a much easier to see field layout. Nice. The water and the textures will change, and it'll be a lot easier to read after this. But thanks there for that, uh, the bad touch. The bad touch, yeah. I never knew that was there. That's awesome. He must have snuck that I in never when we were looking. Me, read me files? No, I, I don't have time to read read me files. <laughs> I don't even have time to write them. No, it's pretty cool. I just rely on people to give me good stuff. I have a team for that. I have too much to do. <laughs> well, there you go. Something new. Another reason to have that mod installed. Now, I have a question for the Bad Touch FS UK, who has obviously made one of the best mods that's out there for... FS15 with that field status. Why is it the only thing he's ever done? <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, it, no, it just seems to me like it's one of those mods that does things I don't even know how he does it. How he can pull the values and percentages of what's on a field. It's pretty good stuff. And I was always curious if, and he might be able to answer this and say, nope, not possible. One of the dreams I've always had is like a soil mod light. 
and would it be able to increase say if we had we have lime and we have manure and we have uh your regular slurry, slurry or fertilizer. Uh, the chemical. I always, yeah, I always wondered if it would be possible to write a mod that determined, okay, instead of just saying this much of it's fertilized, this much of it, this field has slurry, and therefore the output would be greater because slurry gives you a higher yield than, say, lime or all that stuff. You know what I mean? Just a little, like a soil mod light without all the extra crap, but just, okay, if I want to put lime on the field, I'm going to get a better yield. If I put maybe a combination of both lime and the standard fertilizer, I might even increase my yield. It'd be kind of cool. Don't know if that's possible, but hey, just one of those things. He's not creative enough to create vehicles and never took the time to learn map making. But he did an awesome mod. He must have some uh, prior programming knowledge to do that. He said he'll do the rivers if you give him the map. He'll do what? He'll put the he'll do the field status for rivers if you give him the map, unless he's already done it. We're running it on rivers right now. Does it need a separate version? <laughs> No, I thought it did. I thought he had to map the uh, coordinates of the fields for oh. each particular map. No, it does it automatically. The rules of the water is the name of the road. <laughs> there are rules of the water? I'm just cruising my waterways. It's kind of fun. Oh, by the way, I did get stuck with the two boats. Uh, if you go to the end down there where the Kellogg's is, and you park your boat, like, in the middle there, and you take the other boat, and you try and get around them, and you hit the corner, you're stuck. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you're stuck together with the boats and the, and the land. Well, what are you running boats into each other for? Well, because I had one material in one. And he didn't finish it all, so I had to get the other vehicle to the other boat to bring the other materials. So I was trying to go around them, and I got stuck with both of them stuck together. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that there will be boats getting stuck by people. It is pretty easy to. It's it's still though the best scenario. What we are going to do, and I, it's on my list of things to do this week as well. One of the one of the very small things is just simply going to change the reset vehicle point rather than the main farm because the main farm is just up the hill anyway we're going to make the main vehicle reset point where the boat dock is so you won't have any trouble if you have to reset a boat it'll just appear back at the dock where you first bought it you won't get vehicles reset back up to the farm anymore but we figured it we took a vote and we figured it's a lot more convenient for people to be able to reset their boats than have to figure a way to get them out back on. You know what I mean? It was the KW, It's the better of the two options. KW answered it correctly. Yeah, Viper does get stuck with everything. We can't make the map Viper-proof. Well, we could. It would be flat with no water, no trees, no bridges, no wider roads. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Viper is the trout mouth of the waterways. <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, no I think way. I broke it about four times already since I've been playing. Yeah, I just wish the soil the soil mod is cool and everything, but I wish it was a. Not, I wish there was a lighter version. We don't need all the stuff it does. Well, the biggest problem I don't like about the soil mod is uh, growth stages all being the same. You know, everything ends up going a growth stage at midnight. But I have some ideas. 
that I yeah there will probably be an, at least well I've got lots of projects that I have never finished up too so I might work on one of those in the m meantime while we're waiting for some user feedback but I'm gonna play a little bit this time too I wanna play the map for a little while I realize I discover more one of the things you guys are gonna notice and I apologize for this right now but if you want a map that comes out before FS 2020 <laughs> or 19 <laughs> Normally, when we do the develop, we put a lot more into this map than any other map ever. Pleasant Valley version 2 didn't take, ha took about half the time to develop. We literally finished that once and then started over and played it through a second time to make sure everything that we added along the way, that we were testing along the way, worked with each other, you know? Y we don't have the time to do that this time. So you guys are the guinea pigs. So <laughs> um, there's no major problems. The map's going to work. But if there's things such as the flow of it might feel a little off because, okay, the point system, the leveling system, you might level up everything in the first day. We have to. We haven't done... We haven't played a game from scratch to see if there's anything that's going to pop up that's going to be a little bit off, and that'll have to be. T that's where it, that'll be tweaked in the one, the first version. Cyberbitch, the uh, map is scheduled to be released June 18th here live at noon or during our noon to midnight broadcast. Thank you, Lamillo. I'm glad to hear you like us. It's good to be liked. It's just, to me, it's always... that As, as sad as I think the Giants engine is <laughs> at this point with uh, some of the other things I've experimented with, I've done a little bit of mods for ARC and the power of the Unreal engine, and I've done some Unreal lessons and lands, done some landscaping in there already, and just amazing stuff. Giants Engine makes it made it easy for me to get started and start learning. I've always been a learn on my own type person, but I've looked at other systems for modding other games and as as primitive as I think the Giants Engine is now and as many updates I think they could use to make it a little bit more user friendly, it's still one of the better learning systems that's out there. Awesome. How old am I? Way too. Let's put it this way. I will be a half a century old very soon. <laughs> no, you do not. Unreal Engine 4 is a free download, and you can. You only have to pay if you start selling your product. I mean, we've already been... Uh, Big Daddy actually... It's kind of strange, to be honest with you. I've already made a mod that I, that's over on the Ark, for the Ark, and it's pretty good, I, I have to admit. I It was the first one I did. I just find it to be so flexible to be able... And I, I've got a book that I've already purchased that's sitting here on my desk that's uh, look, how to... It's an Unreal 4 blueprint scripting book. teaches you how to do things. And the ease of learning some of the things that I've learned already, it's like, wow, amazing. The stuff I'm, I mean, I got no game programming experience other than here prior to just doing these mods. I put, picked up that Unreal 4 book and started doing it. It's like 12 chapters and the tools that are there i mean incredible i did a first person shooter type s template that they have and added in actions where i can make i made the gun fire bullets and the bullets blow, hit things and i can make the things explode and 
I can make I made the character so he has crouching and running speed and I don't know how to program but I got a character that actually feels like it's, it doesn't have a skin you know it's just a 3D model but the the st it's absolutely amazing I've done and then I've used some of what I learned in the Arc Dev Kit which is also free to use and they supply you with so many tools I think that Unreal Blueprinting is easier to learn than Lewis scripting. The issue there, the bad touch, is the you can't do everything with blueprints. You need to have some C++ knowledge to pull off some of the major things. Or, like I do and have done with this game alone, I don't have a bit of 3D modeling experience at all so I bought with your donations I have been able to purchase some things like the museum through Turbo Squid well what's interesting about Unreal is they have a asset library and there is literally in that asset library someone created a truck it only costs thirty dollars and they have it so it's a cat it's a I don't even know what brand. I don't even know if it's a brand name, but the fact is it's a fifth wheel truck that has attachment capabilities and you can purchase that asset and bring it into the editor and explore it and see how they're what they're using for attaching to trailers and how they went about uh loading the passenger, you know, it's there's assets just like here. If you don't have the experience, though, you can. There's assets such as uh, inventory systems that you can purchase. They're not exactly good, but what I'm thinking of is there's enough there that gives. We'll be able to do a proof of concept game and drum up the interest of the people that know stuff. Now, if you're familiar with Lua scripting, Bad Touch, I do know that I read in the forums that Unreal 4 does, I don't know how, I don't know a thing about programming Lua scripting at, or C++ at all yet. <laughs> I may teach myself some. But my ARC mod is called the Extreme Kitchen Mod there, Manual Paul 78 extreme kitchen it's in the mod files um yeah and i if you want to figure out how to make these maps watch my tutorials on my youtube channel that's linked below i've tried to cover several things some of them they were all done live so some of them are a little bit oops i screwed that up but i i don't mind that the number of times I screw up, I think it helps some people. It's not a science. It's a learning experience every time I'm doing a map. Everything I'm doing. Uh, I'm constantly forgetting things, too. You know, how, oh, how did I do that before? I think the worst episode I ever did was the animal navigation meshes. <laughs> they are just so confusing in this thing. But it, yeah, you had cows on the bar. Uh, up oh, on the yeah, roof. that was terrible. But it was live, so you know, you figure it out eventually. Here's what I'm gonna do. There, bad touch, is there is a book, my next book, and I do like the books because, like I said, my memory sucks, and I like to have hands-on uh, material. Videos on the web are kind of all over the place some of them are outdated but there is a book that was due out in May I haven't even checked it that's supposed to be learning C++ it's on amazon.com while prog well creating games with unreal 4 engine and that sounds like my kind of thing A Uniscript tutorial? What's Uniscript? There's the... <laughs> Last language I used was Turbo Pascal. I, uh... Yeah. 
I I actually uh, worked in a computer room. It was years ago. I didn't know how to do the computer. All I know is job abandoned, call programmer, fix this. <laughs> Wasn't Pascal down by, uh, out or in the 80s? Oh, I don't know. I worked in an old computer room. They went out with Y2K scare. Just lost my job there. I weaseled my way in. Yeah, the book. So I look at those books. I think that's going to be a good one, though. Learning C++ while video game programming with Unreal Engine 4. Just what I need. I've taught myself quite extensively how to use Visual Studio programming, Visual Basic, small programs that I've made. And I always try to, like like the, uh, for those of you guys that don't, my mod folder switcher, which is available by hitting question mark, uh, yeah, no, exclamation point MFS plus. I've, it's simple. I've created several programs. I've created out of my necessity more than anything else with programs I write. And you've seen some of my work with the, uh, other programs that I never finish. <laughs> the Save Game Viewer program that I was working on. I have another program that I wrote that if anybody ever wants it, I can post it up there. But basically what it does is we have a server at somebody's private house. And because of that, if our server goes down, we wanted to have a, a way to access the, the Save Game files from the Farming Sim a game to put up onto a temporary server. So that program that I wrote that runs on Andre's server, it literally just, you point it to the save game folder you want, and all it does is every 15 minutes, it copies into Dropbox the the latest version of whatever's in that save game folder, and it keeps as many copies as I select to choose, up to 15 copies. I think we have it set to five, and it runs it every... So if something happens, I have a save game copy in my Dropbox that I could put up on another server, ready to go. And it's just simple programming stuff. Yeah, every my map making on Farming Simulator, and I'm going to put some of my history in the museum for you guys, all started with... I got the game because it, Sim City came out and it was a big bust and they offered me free money over at Origin and stuff to so I went searching and I saw Farming Sim 13 so I bought it. Then I got it and I'm like I was annoyed to, like most of you guys probably you're driving around on Hagenstead on Farming Simulator 2013 and your darn combines hitting every freaking tree on the corner of the map. And then I realized, oh, they give you an editor. Well, maybe I'll just give it a try and take out those trees myself. And the trees came out. So <laughs> Captain Speedy 04, thanks for the follow. The trees came out so easy that I figured, well, maybe I'll try to make my own map. But I didn't want to make my own map. I want to... I wanna do different things on a map. So I found another map. And the map was Salem, uh, South Dakota map by Fertile J. And I liked it because it was a 4X map. I wanted a map. My main thing was I wanted a map that I could make for myself. It was still not even a a group project. It was me just making my own map. And it was... I wanted something that I didn't have to fast forward time all the time to get to the next day. Give me enough room so I had enough fields to plant on my own. Sim City I haven't played since I got Farming Sim 2013. Haven't even booted it up. That's how bad it sucked. Anyway, <laughs> so I I picked up his map and I said, "Okay, this is great. I'm going to start editing his map." And because it was large and it had big open fields and the kind of thing I wanted. It was flat, easy to work with. And that's where Pleasant Valley, the very first release, it had things I didn't want. Like he had an airport, a huge airport, if you remember, if you know the map I'm talking about. 
Yeah, he makes the 16x Dakota map as well. Bradley, 5192001. Thank you for the follow. Getting on quite a few followers. Uh, so, yeah, so he made the South Dakota map as well, but he, Salem, South Dakota, the small 4x, small 4x map, was the first map I started editing. And if you, and I actually credited him in my first Pleasant Valley map, and he wrote to me and said, why are you giving me credit? I don't see a thing that I've created in <laughs> your map. <laughs> and that was because I replaced everything, but... If you take the two maps and overlay them, as I explained to him, ATV World in Pleasant Valley is exactly where his airport was. All the farms in the original Pleasant Valley are in the exact positions that his farms were, because I used his base map, basically, to create the first Pleasant Valley. So if you drove around my map and you drove around his map, you probably got this eerie feeling like you might have been there before. But the place is named different and looks different. But it's in the same exact location, the same of meters away as the last one. Uh, yep. He does the... He's done some pretty good stuff. I like his concepts that he comes up with. I want I was contemplating doing a 16x map after that last w after this one. I've got some ideas for it, but I I think I might have another whole concept that just was born last night <laughs> that I'm going to try. Which actually involves some of my programming skills as well as the map making skills combined, so we'll see how it works out. I was just going to say, David, you're driving around in circles. I'm driving all over the place. I figured I'd switch up vehicles a little bit. Got to check on my animals. See if I got any pigs down here. So I'm glad I could chat with you guys all night because it's fun. But uh, if you have any questions, throw them up there. Oh, yeah, we've got pigs. We need piglets. Let's go get him. Yeah, I have a copy of a 16x Dakota map. I was looking at it. My thing with a 16x map concept would be and I might have even mentioned this. I don't know if I, at this time if I'm going to do one, but I I wanted to have a map that had lo much longer growing seasons. So you actually would have to plant the map before, you know, you'd have time to actually plant a ton of those huge fields on a 16x map. Like take corn and make it so it takes actually literally three weeks to mature it would be a whole different world. Then you have a growing season and a selling season and a logging season, you know, while you're waiting for your stuff to mature on the fields, you will be off doing some other tasks like maybe delivering that last season's harvest to the factories, you know. And it would really open up a whole new world of different type of style. I'm surprised. Playing this, What's that? Playing this as single play, you wouldn't have that automatically because it would take so so long. Like when I did PV1, it'd take me three weeks to do yeah. a cycle of two hours. Exactly. But if you're doing multiplayer, I think you'd be sitting around for a while. Well, you could do... You might run out of stuff to do. Yeah. If you On this here, I don't think you could ever run out of stuff to do if you... It all depends on what you consider running out of... This map is so different now. It's not even what I expected. And none of my projects, I can honestly say, none of my projects are ever turn out the way I envision them when I start them. Just the way it is. They always turn out a lot better than I envision them when I start them. And are definitely a lot different. 
and I hope we keep advancing. Now this, we might, you know, we'll see. It might not be for everybody. Is this the female side or the male side? I think males go over the other side. Yeah, slowing. I mean, I think it would be kind of cool to have a 16x map with individual farms that you actually, I think I could bring in a sense of you have to pre-plan your harvest, you know. You put together a map where, uh, I guess this isn't the male piglet side, where you have to uh, pre-plan your harvest ahead of time. Make sure you have enough fuel crops planted because it's going to be another four weeks before you can get your fuel crops in the ground again or before to get through the next planting season. Why the heck are my pigs not dumping anywhere? I don't know what side male pigs go. You gotta go away to the do almost to the door. It's probably on the other side. I thought I don't even remember which side's male and which side's female. But it would be cool. And then actually, but the the new idea actually is more of a. It's got. I'm gonna try something because it. The and stay tuned. The first thing I want to try too is a little bit of. Uh, Unreal programming, but if my concept for the next, uh, why am I not getting any male piglets? Where are these triggers? Well, let's see. Turn that off. I got one way to find out which barn it is. I got to label them. As you can see, it's really a pain in the butt. Uh, I know they do go into one of these two. <laughs> I just can't remember which one. Yeah, I got to paint them differently. I can't remember which one the males go in. Not there. The triggers suck. I got to work on the triggers. I I'm well aware of that. Well, maybe you, maybe you got females in both both uh no, things. That's, that's impossible. <laughs> I know they go in. I just don't know which one. And for some reason I'm missing the trigger every time I go through. Watch me go circles around the pig barns. This one looks pretty full. I would think this is the male barn because there's not as many females. Do you have a set limit on how much you can put in there then? Nope. Dang it all. Let's go see what the door says. Well, let's see. Piglets. We've got uh, 16 female hogs and only five male piglets. So this one has to be the females over here because there's way more than five in this barn. Let's go to the other side got to be this one over here and I'm just missing the trigger. I suck at the triggers are yeah this is definitely the barn. But that's not the trigger. There we go it's right in, there we go. I guess I got to pull closer to the bins to drop off the pigs. Oh finally. Let's go get the males, uh, the females. Oh, 
Oh, this wasn't the barn, was it? It was the one around the corner that had the other ones. The rations uh, for the different growth speeds? Uh, I am not exactly sure which ratios for the... There, it's a setting in the map to get the different growth speeds, and it's a, uh, it's just a, the formula for number of seconds that it takes to grow. No, I think he was asking the different fruit types for the different growth stages. For on this map, there they are exactly the same. Oh, he did right ratios. Okay. Yeah, it is in version two. Now I've got some females. They go in the other barn. The middle, what I always do is just fill up all the fruits, all the containers of fruits, and you have no problems. He broke his internet. Well, I broke my internet. Going in circles there for a little while. All right, my mouth is actually starting to swell up because of the tooth thing I got going on. So I'm going to end this here for the evening. And, and if anybody has any last questions, just let me know. Otherwise, you can watch me drive in circles and I won't talk for the next hour. There we go. But thank you all for showing up. Thanks, everybody, for the donations. Uh, we'll have more for you next week, and we are getting really close. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hope you enjoyed the show tonight. Thanks for all the new followers. <laughs> no transgender animals. Uh, not here. Well, they kind of have all, get, all, all get closer the to your trough. All done. You have a project for Big Daddy. <laughs> there you go. Everybody gets an extra 5,000 points. Thank you for showing up, everyone. Uh, we'll be back. I will try to be here on Sunday for a recap show. We'll do it all over, and I'll see if I missed anything, and who knows, I might even get another update in between then with a couple extra things in. But thanks, everybody, for showing up, and I will and KW for monitoring and everybody else out there that's been helping out. You guys have been awesome. And we will hopefully see you on Sunday and we'll get some dates up on the calendar too on the website very soon. And thank you, Viper, for hosting. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and anybody else that might be hosting that I missed. You never know. <laughs>